Mr. Chancellor, it is a great pleasure for me to present Frank O'Day. As a younger man, Frank faced monumental challenges, challenges that are difficult for most of us to comprehend. Through courage and conviction, he faced down those challenges and overcame them. In doing so, I would respectfully submit, he showed us the power of hope and of believing in oneself, and that acting upon that belief with courage and conviction can work. He also opened the door for himself to a career in business, an outlet through which he could channel his considerable creative energy. Frank co-founded the Second Cup, substantially reinventing the gourmet coffee and tea business in Canada. The Second Cup became the largest chain of gourmet coffee and tea shops in the country. He followed that accomplishment by co-founding ProShed Security, a company that pioneered the industry of on-site document destruction. This company became an international organization with franchised operations in Canada, Europe, and the United States. Currently, Frank serves as the CEO of Arcs Building Products, a company that is spearheading the way toward environmentally sustainable building practices, once again showing an uncommon business prescience. As a successful business person, Frank began looking for ways to contribute to his community. In 1985, he co-founded Street Kids International, an organization he developed to help homeless children in third world countries through education and self-reliance programs. A few years later, he founded War Child Canada, an organization that helps children in war-affected countries, and co-founded the Canadian Landmine Foundation, an organization that raises funds for the dismantling of minefields around the world. He went on to initiate that organization's most successful fundraising program, Night of a Thousand Dinners, with participation of some 30,000 people in 29 countries. In addition to serving on boards of private and public companies and not-for-profit organization, Frank serves as the chair of Royal Roads University Foundation. He has been publicly acknowledged recently uh, for his financial support of that university's legacy campaign. In this busy life of challenge, success, and contribution, Frank remains dedicated to family life and has also found time to tell us his incredible story in his recently published book entitled, When All You Have Is Hope. Frank's many contributions have been recognized by the award of an honorary Doctor of Laws degree from Royal Roads University and by his investiture as an officer of the Order of Canada in 2004. Now it's time for Frank to be recognized by his hometown university, by Carleton University. Mr. Chancellor, in recognition of a distinguished entrepreneurial career in business, contribution to community, and philanthropy, I request that you confer the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa upon Frank O'Day. By virtue of my authority, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Thank you, Professor McIntyre, Chancellor, Mr. President, Mr. Chair, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly, you, the graduates, congratulations to you all and good morning. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention all the support uh, behind you. Congratulations to you as well. Thirty plus years ago, I found myself sta standing on the corner of Shooter and Jarvis Street in Toronto. Everything I owned was on my back. I had a white t-shirt, a pair of blue jeans, sneakers, and an old green coat. My life was made up of going over to Young Street and panhandling for nickels and dimes. I worked the street with two other guys, and when we got 99 cents, we'd get a bottle of wine, and we would go back to the alleyway beside the house in which we lived. And I can remember the conversation if it were yesterday. It went something like this. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'll quit drinking. Tomorrow I'll get a job. Tomorrow I'll call my family. Tomorrow I'll be the best salesman there ever was. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. 
and tomorrow didn't come. In the end of the day, we had to make the most important decision of the day. And that would, would, was, would we go over to Young Street and get 50 cents each so we could slip in, sleep indoors in the flop house, or would we sleep on a park bench? The rule in the flop house was you tied your shoelaces around your ankle, other, otherwise the first guy up got the best pair of shoes. Contrast that, if you will, to four years ago standing at the Rideau Hall on the red carpet and a citation be re being read, surrounded by family and friends and other recipients, and the Governor General awarding the, Gover the Order of Canada. And fast forward today at this wonderful, fabulous institution on this glorious day for you and for your friends. How do you go from Skid Row to Carleton University here with you? I think I sum it up with three words. Hope, vision, and action. You each entered this university some years ago with the great hope of, of getting to this day and you took all the appropriate action, and you got here. Again, congratulations. When I think about that journey, I think of a, of a dad sitting in his den one morning, a Sunday morning, perhaps trying to get a little work done, when his five-year-old son comes in, and it's a beautiful day like today, and the son wants to go out and play ball, and his dad needs just a few more minutes, and he's thinking about that, and he wonders how he can distract his son for a couple of minutes, so he turns around and he sees on the coffee table a Time magazine, and on the cover of the Time magazine is a picture of the world. And he tears up the world into tiny pieces, and he says to his five-year-old son, go and put this together, thinking that'll buy him a half an hour. The kid shows back up in the room in two or three minutes, and it's all put together, and his father says, how did you do that? And his father, and the son says, it was easy, Dad. He said, there was a picture of a person on the back. And I put the person together, and the world came into place. And I think about your journey, and you, you put the pieces together. And for many of you, the journey is now over. But the odyssey begins. And that world that Sun put together awaits you, awaits the challenges that you can bring, and the brains that you can bring to the challenges of the, of the universe today. And I, don't, I believe you can change the world. I believe each of you can do this. And I'll share with you a briefly an experience that I had. I was flying to Florida by myself, and I began chatting by, with a, a, the, a guy sitting beside me. It turned out his name was Peter Doglish. He was working for UNICEF at the time in Khartoum, the capital of Sudan. And there were 10,000 kids on the street. And his job was to find shelter and education and anything he could for the kids. And one day he went to the U.S. Embassy to see if there was anything in the embassy that he might be able to use. He wasn't able to find anything, but he did find a Tom and Jerry cartoon, just a reel-to-reel, -reel, and he got a projector, and he showed it on the little, in the shelter they were using, and he showed it on the wall, and there were a dozen kids, and they didn't speak English, but they wanted to see it over and over and over again. And the next night, a hundred kids, the next night, a thousand kids, and they finally wore out the film. Peter went on to tell me that these young children, some as young as 10, were tested by the World Health Organization, and it turned out some 23% were HIV positive. Kids were dying of AIDS. They had a slogan that translated to English, my mother the street, because all the information they had came from the street. And the idea that came to us on the airplane was, why doesn't somebody make a health message in a cartoon and deliver that to the kids? And to make a short run out of a long one, we took two and a half years and raised a bunch of money and we created a film. And it was just about at its end of creation when World Health called and said, we know you're making the film. Will you please bring the film to symposium because our AIDS workers need whatever they can to help these children. So we worked night and day and finished the film. We flew to Geneva. And on the way to Geneva, we talked about it and said, how are we going to talk about this film? Usually when you're putting an education film together, you'll talk about pedagogy and research and all the stuff you did. We said, no. Let's turn off the light, turn on the film, and let it speak for itself. We did that. 23 minutes later, we turned the lights on. There, you could hear a pin drop. Slowly, Jonathan Mann got up at the head of the table and turned to us and said, that 
film as a benchmark for teaching kids about serious subjects for the 21st century. They targeted 40 million kids to see that film. Kids live because two guys met on an airplane. Hope, vision, action. As you journey through your odyssey of life, you'll be presented by many opportunities. As the President said, your, op your obligation is to give back. I would encourage you to think of that father and son, because at some time when you get to the end of your odyssey or near the end, it's time to think back on your life. And, and this weekend I'll be 63 and I can look back on my life and I think it isn't so much the business success that I think about, it's the difference I made that gives me great comfort. And your opportunity is to make that difference. And the world needs you, and it needs you in the most important way possible, and that is to use the energy and the education and the experience that you found here at this wonderful institution and change the world for my grandkids and yours. And God knows we need you. I've had the opportunity of traveling the world. I've seen some horrors. I've seen with, with uh, the Landmine Foundation and the child soldiers in the third world, I have seen some remarkably horrible things. But by the same token, I have also seen people just like you trying to make a difference in their lives, their families, their community, and the world. So at the end of the day, I think it's important to remember that it is what we give back that counts so much. And perhaps Desiderata says it best when it says in part, beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You're a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars, you have a right to be here. And whether or not it's clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, trust your God, whatever you conceive him to be, and whatever your labors and aspirations in the noisy confusion of life, keep peace with your soul. For all its sham, drudgery, and yes, broken dreams, it's still a beautiful world. So be careful and strive to be happy. And remember that dad and his kid and what you're going to think about this world as you get to the end of your odyssey. Congratulations. Thanks very much.